In this video, I'm going to go over integration by parts. I'll go through the methodology in how to apply this and some of the controversy behind it. Uh, we'll obviously be using the formula and there's six examples that I'll work through. Here are the six examples. If you want to pause the video, take a screenshot and work through them by yourself, then you can check your answer when I go through them. Otherwise, let's dive in. Alrighty then. Okay, so we're going to select U in the following questions and V prime. Don't forget V prime is DV by DX. And when we integrate U times V prime, we will get uv minus the integral of du dx times v. Now that sounds complicated, but when we do the examples, you'll just see it all comes out quite nicely. But the most important thing is how are we gonna select what u and v prime are? So there's a little um, acronym I late that will follow. So if we see in the question an inverse trig function, such as arc tan, arc cos, or arc sine, we will call that u. That is the same as saying sine to the minus one or cosine to the minus one or tangent to the minus one. If we see a logarithmic function, we'll call that u. So we're gonna go down this list. And the first time that we see one of these things, we're gonna call that u. So the next would be algebraic uh, expressions such as polynomials, x squared, x cubed, and then trig functions, and then x, exponential functions last. So there's some controversy on the internet saying uh, I late doesn't work. Uh, maybe we interchange the L and the I. Look, I'm just telling you from my experience, this works pretty well. Uh, it doesn't work for every single one, but I, I, most of the questions, if not all of the questions I've done, this works. And if it doesn't, you just need to interchange the I and the L and that'll pretty much solve most of the problems. Okay, question one. So we have to integrate X times E to the minus X. So we're gonna work down this acronym here and we're gonna call the first thing that we see U. So do we see an inverse trig function? No, right? Do we see a logarithmic function? No. Do we see an algebraic expression like a polynomial? And the answer is yes. This X is just a, an expression like a simple polynomial. It's just X to the one. So what we'll do is we will call that U then u prime is equal to one. Now I like to work around in like an anti-clockwise direction here. As soon as we found u prime, we'll jump straight over to what's called v prime, and that will be the other expression. So that'll be e to the minus x. Now what we need to do is we need to integrate that to get v. So we integrate e to the minus x, we not only just get e to the minus x, but then we have to divide through by the derivative of that power, so that'd be minus. Now we're gonna plug all of this into the integration by parts expression. If you remember, was uv minus the integral of v times du dx, right, with respect to x. So let's just substitute everything in that we have. So we have u, that's x. Now we've got v, which is minus e to the minus x. So let's put the minus at the front and that's e to the minus x. And then we have subtract, and we've got the integral of v, which is uh, the same thing again, so that's minus, so we should put minus e to the minus x, so that's actually really a plus, times du by dx, which is just one, so I'm not gonna do that right now, so because it's just one. So we're just gonna integrate that. Well, we, when we integrate uh, this value, uh, it's gonna say exactly the same, we're gonna divide through with the derivative, so that's gonna be plus, so we're gonna end up with negative x e to the minus x, minus, as I said this term's gonna come out to be plus now, Okay, which would be e to the minus x. And don't forget, we've got a plus c once we've done an integration, uh, like an indefinite integral. So we can just factor out uh, e to the minus x now. So in this, that's c, because it's an indefinite integral. And that is the end of question one. Okay, question two. So x times cosine x. Let's go down this i late again. So do we have an inverse trig function? No, we don't. Or a logarithmic function? No. Do we have an algebraic expression? Yes, we do. That's the same as the question one. That's x. u is equal to x. So u prime is equal to one. Remember I said work in an anti-clockwise fashion around here. So what we'll do is now we're going to have v prime is the other value. So that's cosine x, so that's cosine x. Now we need to integrate cosine, right, to get v. So don't forget, if you differentiate sine, you get cosine. If, the, if you integrate cosine, you will get sine, right? So we need to make sure we get that correct. So therefore then, so that's sine x. 
Um, therefore, now we're going to plug all this into the integration by parts. So that's U V. It's just a case of plugging everything in in the correct order. So U is this X value. DV is sine X minus the integral of V, which is the sine X. And du is just one, right? So it's just times one, and then dx. So now what we've got to do is we just got to tidy that all up. Um, if you differentiate sine, you get cosine. But if you integrate, you get cos. If you integrate sine x, you get negative cosine x. So that, that's what this term will be. So we're going to get x times sine x minus. Now the integral of this will become minus cosine x. Right, and don't forget that little plus C, right? You could lose a mark if you forget that. So our final result then is gonna be X times sine X plus cosine X plus C. And that is the end of question two. Question three. So watch this one carefully because there's a little trick in this one that you need to be aware of. So let's go through the acronym. Uh, there are no inverse functions. There are no log functions or algebraic expressions like just X or X squared. There are trig functions. So that will be our U. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we've got U is equal to sine X. The derivative of sine will become cosine. Now, therefore then, uh, v prime, remember, we're going in this U shape around here. So V prime is going to be E to the X. And when we integrate E to the X, we will just get E to the X, right? So there's all our values that we need to plug into the integration by parts expression. So let's just take this down, um, put it here. Okay, so we're integrating this and this is equal to then uh, UV. So we've got UV minus the integral of V times du by dx with respect to x. Let's put all of these elements in. So we have u, which is sine x, times v, which is just e to the x, right? So that's e to the x, minus the integral of v, which is e to the x again. So we'll put that in here. And du by dx, which is cosine x, right? So um, what are we going to do now, right? Well, that's all with respect to dx, remember. Now, uh, we have to integrate uh, using... Um, another integration by parts. So this is like a repetition. So this is what I was talking about at the beginning. So there's a little trick here. So we've got to do this all over again. Uh, we go through the ILATE okay, acronym. And the first thing that we get to is a trig function. So this will be U is equal to cosine X. U prime is negative sine X. Okay, and that means then V prime, so V prime is going to be the E to the X and then V will just be E to the X. Remember when you integrate E to the X, you just end up with E to the X. So let's go ahead and put all that in again. So let's just bring this down. Remember this is coming down here. So this is sine X times E to the X minus, and then we're gonna use the integration by parts. So this is UV, so that'll be cosine X times E to the X, right? Minus the integral of V du, which is E to the X and du, which is negative sine x. So that's actually gonna turn into a plus, and this will be sine x. Now you might think we're going around in circles here, but there's actually a, a really good step that we need to see here. So let's just get rid of all of these brackets and these negatives. Right Now, it looks like we're kind of back to where we started, but uh, we are in some cases, but I just want you to have a look at that. That is exactly the same as this. So what happens is, is we'll just write this out here. This is the integral of e to the x sine x. And so what we've got essentially is the same thing on both sides. So we are going to move this to the left-hand side. So we're going to sum the integral of e to the x sine x to both sides. So this is the trick I was talking about. So then we're going to get two lots of the integral e to the x sine x dx equal to sine x e to the x minus cosine x e to x. Now we'll obviously factor out the e to the x in just a moment. Um, and now we're going to divide both sides by two. So in other words, times in both sides by a half. So then we end up with the integral of e to the x sine x dx, which is the question what we're trying to do is half. Now I'm going to factor out the e to the x here, just simply sine x minus cosine x and plus c. 
don't forget, we always have our plus C if it's an indefinite integral. And that's a very common style of question where it feels like you're going around in circles, but actually you're just sort of uh, getting a result that is the same as the question, and then you can combine them. Question four. So the integral of x squared uh, times natural log. So we go down and straight away we get natural log. So that's going to be our u. So let's go ahead and put that in now. So u is equal to natural log x. The derivative of u with respect to x is going to be 1 over x. And remember, we're going around this u shape. So we're going to now start with v prime. And that's the other expression. So that's x squared. The integral of v prime will give us v, but that will be x cubed over 3. Now let's go ahead and substitute all of that into the integration by parts. OK, so let's paste that down there now. Um, so that will be equal to then uh, uv, so that's natural log x, times v, which is x cubed over 3, minus the integral of v du, right? So v is uh, that x cubed over 3 again, and du by dx is 1 over x, and that's all with respect to dx. Now we can see straight away here that one of these is going to cancel with this x on the bottom. So we'll tidy that up. That's one third of x cubed of times natural log minus the integral of x squared. Now that's uh, over 3. So we can put the third on the outside actually here. That will be a bit cleaner. And that's with respect to dx. So that will result in one third x cubed natural log x minus now when we add one to the power and divide by the new power we'll be turning that back into three and dividing by three when we do that so that will be all result in x cubed over nine and let's not forget that plus c there and that is the end of question four okay question five so in uh previous parts of the course we never thought we could integrate natural log x um, and there, there is no other element to it, but there is actually this just hidden slightly. So there's a little trick. I just thought I'd show you this. Imagine doing the integral of 1 times natural log x. Now, I remember the first time I saw this, I thought this was a bit of a, a trick. But yes, you can actually put 1 there. So therefore, when you do that, then when you work down i late here in that order, there are no inverse functions. There is a log function. So that will be our u value. So that would be natural log x. And the derivative of that we just saw in the previous question is 1 over x. That means then that v prime, because remember that's always the other expression, is going to be simply 1. And when you integrate 1, you're going to end up with x. So you can actually integrate natural log straight in this way. So that will be equal to u with respect to x. And we just plug everything in. So we'll get natural log x times v, which is just x, right? Um, minus the integral of v, which is x times the u, and that's 1 over x with respect to x. That's very convenient. They cancel, and therefore then we'll just be integrating 1 with respect to x, and that will just result in x. So therefore then we've got natural log x times x minus x, and you can factor out an x if you wish, um, but that is also plus c because it's an indefinite integral. And that is the end of question 5. Okay, question six. So this involves an inverse trig function. So working down the acronym I late, that will be our very first expression there. So um, that will be u, right? So u is equal to arctan x. Now, if you haven't seen my video on differentiating these, click the tab above and you it will take you to it. Uh, this will become one over one plus x squared. Now, working around in this U shape that we've been doing on all of the questions, this means that V prime will be the other expression. So you might be a bit confused because it looks like a quotient. So another way of writing that would be 1 over 1 plus x squared times arctan x dx, right? So we just do what we did on all the other ones. If we've called this U, right, then this thing is V prime. Right, so v prime will be the 1 over 1 plus x squared. Right Now, um, if you just look on the left here, uh, if you are integrating this, well, that will result in arctan because we just differentiated it and got that value. So when you integrate, you're going to go back the other way, and that means that v will be arctan x. So there's a few things here you've got to be careful of.
right? So therefore then, when we're plugging it all in, we're going to get, let's write out uv minus the integral of v times du by dx. Let's put all of this on the right-hand side into this now. So we got u, which is arc tan x times v, which is also arc tan x. So that's going to be squared. So what I'll do is I'll just put the two there for squaring it. And then we have minus the integral of v, which is our tan x du, right? Which is this over here. Now, if you remember from the previous question, this is looking very, very similar, where we might need to combine these things together. So what I'll do is I will move this over to the right here, and we will just bring down this, uh, the actual question, and then you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so let's put that in now. And, okay, let's put that in now, there. And that makes it a little bit clearer because we can see that this expression here is exactly the same as this expression over here. What we're gonna do is what we did on the previous question is we're going to sum this value to the right, but then we also have to sum it to the left. Therefore, we're gonna get two lots of the integral of arc tan x over this one plus x squared with respect to dx is equal to arc tan squared of x. And now we're just simply dividing both sides by two. So this will result in half arc tan squared x. And don't forget your plus c because it's an indefinite integral. And that is the end of that question, six. Okay, so here's a very quick explanation of where this uh, expression comes from for the integration by parts. Imagine differentiating a product, you would get uh, du by dx times v plus u times dv by dx. And now integrate those two terms on the right, you'll get back to uv. But in doing so, you would have to do each one independently. Now, if we move one of those terms over, and in this case, we're going to be moving du by dx uh, times v over to the left. So we're subtracting that from both sides, leaving us with the integral of u times dv by dx. Now, a quick rearrangement, basically moving everything around to the left and then over to the right. We'll get this expression here, which is what you see in all the textbooks. Let me know how you get on in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you next time.